you want to take some shots of what it looks like outside right now, that'll give you a pretty good idea of what it looks like in Idaho in the wintertime and sometimes what it looks like in the Central Valley in the wintertime. And that's pretty hard on bees. I don't know if that's the cold that kills them, but the wet and the high humidity, the moisture, um, we could keep them, get them in here and hold them at 38 to 42 degrees and keep them from basically being soaked all winter. We first experimented with storing bees indoors in the late 1980s or early 1990s. We, we found an indoor building that we could uh, put the bees in and uh, we didn't know much about it. We didn't understand the needs for ventilation and, and we lost some of the bees just because uh, I think oxygen deprivation was too tight and we got too much CO2 in there and killed some of the bees. So it was a learning process, but uh, we, we got serious about it in the late 1990s, started storing almost all of our bees indoors. And so we've been doing it for more than 20 years now. Uh, my career is farming, mostly potato farming. And so I had, had spent 20 years around storages and a, a big beekeeper out of Texas found us and asked us to build him the first storage that I was involved with. Uh, not everyone wants or can or wants to afford their own building and so that's how we've kind of tailored our business is to, is to build big enough buildings that, that we can lease out space to beekeepers. So we're storing on the facility, we're storing, if you count the other, the beekeepers bees that owns the own building, I, there's 150,000 hives on the facility. In the early 90s, um, Dad rented an apple storage, stored for a couple years indoor, and I was pretty young then. All I had to do was sweep up dead bees, that was my job. Then we stored outside in California for a while, stored outside in Idaho for a while, and then decided to build this building in 06, and, and this is basically, this building will hold about six, 7,000 hives. It just uses ambient air to keep things cool. Kind of got a little bigger after that, built another building, and then a couple years ago built a refrigerated building, and so three of them that we store indoors. We, we stole the technology from, from the potato industry. Potatoes and onions in Idaho have buildings very similar to these. They, they try to utilize as much outside cold air as they can. There's big fresh air doors that, that bring fresh air in when it's cold enough and when it's not, the refrigeration turns on and the air is just circulated. It's through the bees and back through the refrigeration evaporator coils and we've we've learned from our own experience we've uh, we've learned from other people's experience the you know, we've shared information back and forth people have tried different places and different things for for storing the bees we have learned over the years what the best temperature is to store them at did you feel how much warmer it was when you came in here it's 24 degrees outside, it's 42 degrees in here. And we like to keep it at 42 degrees. That's, that's the temperature where they do the best. They consume the least amount of feed and we have the least amount of attrition. And there's temperature probes in there that we pull out into the bees and stick in different spots. If it gets extremely warm, um, 60 usually interior, inside temperature. We've got misters in the ceiling we'll turn on. Like up on the ceilings, those little black deals hanging down, that's the misters. Um, that, that's basically if I, I can turn those on and they'll put a fine mist like a greenhouse type mister or like you've seen in a dairy, run them for about two, three hours and that'll drop the temperature down into the high 50s and um, that'll hold them, kind of calms the bees down and it'll cool them. I don't like to run them more than about two, three hours. You can create a mold problem in the, in the buildings if you run too much moisture in there, but it does help to kind of calm them down. Uh, this is the original bee storage we built. We built this in 2006. Um, it's basically designed to work positive pressure. So basically you're sucking in more air than you're letting out. In theory, um, that's based off, there's other beekeepers in this valley that have built buildings or retrofitted buildings to do that. And you basically shouldn't have any hot spots. That was the theory. So you're pushing more air in than you're letting out. With all the small exhaust boxes with the positive pressure, you can kind of guarantee where the air is going. If you have exhaust there, that's where the air has to go. So you're positively pressuring the building, but if you know that you have bees and everything here, you have exhaust there and there. So you know that air is going to be moving in those directions where if you did a full sweep, you just did an intake and an exhaust, it'll migrate slowly, but you would have pockets in the corners and potentially where, you know, in the, in the sides. That could get hot because you're not 
guaranteeing where the air is going. This is the bees in the stacks. They haven't been touched yet. They've been in here for 70 days. Ventilation comes from, from the middle and we'll put those tubes in, uh, very similar to what they do with, with potatoes. Those tubes are perforated and so air comes out all the way through. We get good ventilation, good circulation. All of the return air gets sucked up through this side over here and back through the system again and then it blends with, uh, with outdoor air to control temperature and, and oxygen levels. It's, it's kind of like taking a shower. You know, you've, you've got a, you, you have, it takes both hot water and cold water to create an exact temperature. And so we do the exact same thing here. We, we utilize the heat from the bees um, and then the cold air either from the refrigeration or from outside, but you mix the two to get that exact 40 degrees. We're getting about 45 degrees on the outside versus about 35 on the wall, which tells me that there's a lot of heat coming from that hive. So this moisture and the frost that's on these coils, that's it's coming what out the of bees it. breathing, right? That's yep. coming out of the hive. That's right. That's that moisture. Yep. Just you got a drain in the middle of the floor. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of water. A lot of bee breath, yeah. yeah. I'll show you where it comes in later, but this, the air up above is the bees, is the return air coming from the bees. So this is where we measure the CO2, the level of CO2 coming off the bees. Um, and it's using this, that, the bees as the heat source to mix with the cold. So it's turning the refrigeration, cycling it on and off with, to, to mix with the, the heat from the bees to get the right temperature. When it's cold outside, these fresh air doors act as a mixing valve. So it, it closes off the heat coming back from the bees or opens it up depending on how much you need. And then it exhausts it out another part of the building. When Once these open up, the exhaust dampers um, open up and push the heat out. We're right on the other side of the bees now. This is our, our plenum, we call it, our air plenum. So now it's bringing that air that's the right temperature through those fans and forcing it down this hallway and, and then pressuring it up. So there's slits in this wall where it goes out to the bees and those have all been sized to match the airflow. It's, it's a little bit like a balloon. When you blow on the balloon, it, it goes all the way to the end of it and then pressures up backwards. So the, the air coming out of this fan actually hits the end of that wall first and then it pressures everything up and then it all goes out evenly throughout the strips, the, the slits. So there are bees to the top of the ceiling. It's pretty crazy. refrigerated building. The reason we built that was for some other things that we were going to try to do that didn't really have anything to do with winter storage. It was more about getting bees to go broodless in the summertime to treat for mites and we did play, we have played around with that a little bit. So concrete air floor, the air comes into this underfloor cavity and comes up basically through registers kind of like this in the floor. There's small little slits where all the air comes up across the entire concrete floor. So air is coming up right through this little register right here, and they're evenly spaced across the entire length of the floor, width of the building, and length of the building. We specially sized these ducts to where when bees come through here for cleaning, there's enough space for a person to come in here and clean out the 
the duck tunnels at the end of the season. This pretty much guarantees you're going to have error evenly throughout the storage, but it, co it comes with a price tag. But that air floor is, is the best. In Boise, one B storage has been put up that way. They, it's, uh, it's extremely expensive but it is probably the Cadillac, right? It's probably the very best way that you could move air. So it, it, it allows you to lay, to stack things any direction, any way you want, anywhere in the building. And the whole entire floor is, it moves air. Across all these storages, we, the main thing is make, making sure airflow and oxygen is available at all times. So even if there's a power outage, we have generators for backup power, uh, making sure the fans continue to run, always providing oxygen to the bees at all time. Other redundancies, again, um, if one fan were to fail, the system does not shut down. Just that fan would be down and we will just run on the remaining amount of fans. Um, alarm callouts are sent out via text message or email. Nick gets alarmed, I get alarmed and we'll jump on it service-wise as, as soon as possible to get things back up and running. So this is this backup generator. So we can run 100% off the grid if we have to. Uh, I think we can get 48 hours. We got fuel capacity for 48 hours. This building we designed so that each corner of the building has its own air system and backup generator. And even at that, you'll recognize there's multiple fans, uh, multiple compressors within the refrigeration units, just so that if any time we ever have any kind of a breakdown, we've got lots of equipment. It can run, it can limp along, even with 30% with of it out of commission, it can still maintain what we need it to. So overbuild because there's, uh, we're storing a lot of bees in there. You have to look at what, what you have at, during the time of year. I mean, if you're never gonna have cold enough air to try and bring in, then you're gonna have to size it refrigeration to, to manage that 18 watts of output per hive constantly, constantly because that's, that's the only source of cooling you're gonna have. You can't rely on potentially, oh, we might get it you know, 10, 15% of the time. Well, if that 10, 15% doesn't ever come up, the building is slowly going to keep warming up and warming up and eventually you're going to have a bunch of dead bees. Here again, wintertime, we're having, you know, ambient temperatures that are going to help supplement that. So you're not going to have to base an entire refrigeration load off of, off of just what's inside. We're going to have Mother Nature help balance that out. Southern California in the hotter areas, you know, if we're not getting below 70 degrees, okay, well then we're gonna have, we're not gonna get a lot of outdoor runtime. Maybe a little bit at night we're gonna be able to supplement, but it's probably gonna be almost exclusively refrigerated to be able to maintain 40 degrees to get, you know, get your hives broodless and get them to a point where they're not eating a lot and, every, and they can be managed easier inside the storage. So that's, regionally, it's, it's very different. I mean, it's very different from this side of the state, southwestern Idaho to southeastern Idaho, and going, you know, just across the Montana border. It's very, very different in terms of what temperature does. Another point, too, if you're building the building, talk about power, make sure you have enough power to <laughs> run the building. It's, it takes a lot of power to run these things. You can't be way off and, and make sure you talk to your power guys before you get <laughs> get too carried away, especially on a refrigerated building. It costs a lot of money to bring power across the highway. I know that.